In 2025, Ukraine did something that should have been impossible. It started shooting down Russia's most advanced cruise missiles, not with a Patriot battery, not with Iris T, not with a multi-million euro interceptor, but with a 35 millimeter cannon. While the world was focused on Patriots, NASAMs, and long-range interceptors, a little-noticed Rheinmetall system, Skynex, quietly proved it could erase KH-101 and caliber cruise missiles in live combat, a weapon originally designed for drones, suddenly began killing the same missiles Russia fires from strategic bombers thousands of kilometers away. No headline captured it. No Western analyst predicted it. And Moscow absolutely did not expect it. For the first time in decades, a gun-based air defense system punched directly through the myth that cruise missiles require elite missile interceptors to stop them. Yeah, Skynex didn't perform well. It just destroyed the entire cost structure of modern air warfare. So what happens when a few thousand dollars worth of 35 millimeter airburst rounds can erase a million dollar cruise missile in two seconds? And if Ukraine can do this with a small Skynex battery, what happens when Europe fields hundreds of them? This is the story of how a cannon, overlooked, underestimated, and dismissed, became the one thing Russia never feared, and the one system it now has no answer to. No one in the West expected a press briefing to detonate like this. In late 2025, Rheinmetall CEO Armin Popperger casually revealed what Ukraine had been keeping quiet for months. Skynex had shot down Russian KH-101 and caliber cruise missiles in real combat, not drones, not loitering munitions, not cheap Iranian imports. Cruise missiles launched from Tu-95 and Black Sea platforms, Russia's crown jewels of long-range strike warfare. The statement hit harder than any marketing line because frontline operators immediately backed it up. Ukrainian air defense crews confirmed the kills. Defense Express corroborated the engagements with battlefield data. Analysts who dismissed the system as just a drone killer suddenly had to explain how a 35 millimeter cannon erased missiles designed to penetrate NATO grade defenses. This wasn't a lucky intercept. This wasn't a one-off anomaly. This was a paradigm violation. For decades, Western doctrine drilled one belief into military planning. Cruise missiles must be stopped with missiles, preferably expensive ones. Patriots, Iris-T, SM-6, Aster. Skynex shattered that idea in one move. A system costing a fraction of a modern interceptor defeated Russia's most sophisticated long-range weapons. The same KH-101s that glide below radar. The same calibers that have struck Ukrainian cities since 2014. The same missiles Moscow believed gave it an asymmetric strategic advantage. Suddenly, the monopoly was gone. Missile defense supremacy? Broken. The price per kill equation? Flipped. Russia's entire long-range strike concept? Compromised. Because if a 35 millimeter cannon can destroy a K, H-101 mid-flight, every assumption about modern air defense collapses. If you want to understand how a cannon killed a cruise missile, you have to understand what Skynet actually fires. If you're enjoying this deep dive, please like the video and consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us bring more global insights. Now, back to the video. The system doesn't fire shells, it fires traps. Each shot of a head ammunition is a programmable airburst round containing 152 tungsten subprojectiles, each one a dense, razor-edged fragment designed to punch straight through high-speed targets. Before the round even exits the barrel, an electromagnetic inductor programs its electronic timer to detonate at an exact point in space, calculated in real time based on the target's speed, altitude, and approach vector. The moment the round reaches that point, it bursts open, not behind the missile, not even at the missile. In front of it, that single detail is the entire kill logic. Cruise missiles like the KH-101 and Caliber fly low, subsonic, and predictable. Mach 0.57 to Mach 0.76, hugging terrain at 30 to 70 meters. That flight profile makes them ideal victims for an A-head cloud. When 152 tungsten pieces erupt in a cone-shaped pattern directly into their path, the missile doesn't take damage. It disintegrates. Guidance fins shear off inlet shred. Sensors get sliced apart. The airframe loses stability in milliseconds. Skynex destroys the missile by tearing out the control organs that keep it flying. And the performance gap becomes brutal when you compare subsonic missiles to Russia's supersonic P-800 Onyx. The Onyx screams in at Mach 2+, leaving gun systems barely seconds to react, which is why Ukraine has only managed an estimated 5.7% interception rate against it. 
but the KH-101 and Caliber? Slow, steady, and forced to fly predictable terrain-following profiles. Exactly the kind of target ahead was built to annihilate. This is why Skynex can kill cruise missiles at a price that wrecks the logic of Russia's strike doctrine. But the ammunition is only half the weapon. Ahead, ammunition is lethal, but it's the sensor architecture behind Skynex that makes the missile kill inevitable. A complete battery links together, a multi-role fire control post, a long-range radar station, and four autonomous 35mm gun mounts. The main radar scans out to 50 kilometers, detecting incoming missiles long before they drop to terrain following altitude. But the real genius is what happens next. The battery doesn't rely on that single radar. Each gun mount carries its own X-band tracking radar combined with a high-resolution electro-optical or infrared system for guns. Four radars, four EO or IR eyes all feeding fire control calculations into a distributed node network. If a missile slips past one radar, it still has three more waiting for it. If jamming blinds one sensor, the optical trackers take over. If weather shuts out optics, X-band sees through it. Skynex is engineered to have no single point of failure. Once a target is confirmed, the system needs as little as 4.5 seconds to switch from detection to firing, fast enough to engage a cruise missile approaching at subsonic speed, long before it reaches the defended area. And this is where Russian doctrine collapses. Saturation strikes? Skynex divides targets across four independent guns. Jamming? Every gun has its own radar, so no blind zone exists. Terrain masking? EOIR tracking catches what radar loses. Decoys? Ahead kills everything in the flight corridor. A single Skynex battery acts like a miniature air defense hive each component reinforcing the others, turning the sky into a set of overlapping kill boxes that missiles must pass through to reach their target. Most never make it. This would already be impressive until you look at the economics. Killing a cruise missile for 4,000 euros shouldn't be possible. Yet Skynex does it consistently. For comparison, Iris T SLM, approximately 400,000 euros per interceptor. NASAMS or AM-ROM, 1 million euros plus. Patriot Pack 2 or Pack 3, 2 to 4 million euros per shot. Skynex ahead round, a few thousand euros. That isn't a price difference, it's a strategic earthquake. A Patriot battery can carry a few dozen ready missiles. A Skynex battery brings thousands of programmable rounds into the fight. The cost per kill ratio becomes brutally one-sided. Russia spends millions to launch a cruise missile, Ukraine spends a few thousand to delete it, and Rheinmetall is scaling ahead production rapidly, meaning the system grows cheaper and faster to supply as demand increases. Mass manufacturing is lowering unit costs, right as Russia is running out of high-end munitions. This flips the entire logic of Russia's strike doctrine. The Kremlin built its strategy around the belief that Cruise missiles force Ukraine to drain expensive interceptors. Mass salvos will overwhelm defenses by cost alone. Ukraine cannot afford to shoot down every missile. But Skynex destroys that equation. A barrage only works if it forces the defender into economic collapse. With Skynex, the collapse shifts back toward Russia. Cruise missile warfare is supposed to impose financial pain. Skynex turns it into a discount shooting gallery. And this new concept is actually built on a lesson Russia learned the hard way years ago. Long before Skynex arrived, Russia had already been warned, and it ignored the warning completely. In 2022 and 2023, Ukraine began deploying the Flak Panzer Gepard, a relic of the Cold War that many Western analysts dismissed as museum-grade hardware Russia mocked it openly. State media called it obsolete, outdated, and incapable of stopping modern missiles. Then the battlefield proved otherwise. Footage confirmed Gepard units shooting down KH-101 cruise missiles, the same long-range, radar-evading weapons launched from Tu-95 bombers. A system designed in the 1980s was killing some of Russia's most advanced munitions with nothing more than a radar-guided 35mm gun. That should have set off alarms inside Moscow. Instead, it triggered denial. Rather than reassessing their vulnerability to gun-based air defense, Russian planners dismissed the Gepard kills as lucky anomalies. They convinced themselves that a decrepit legacy platform could not possibly represent a future threat. But Rheinmetall saw exactly what those engagements meant. Skynex was built on the same foundation, but every critical component was modernized. 
advanced multi-layer tracking radars, automated fire control logic, high-speed data links, electro-optical tracking, and the ahead airburst round Gepard never had. The result wasn't Gepard 2.0. It was a fundamentally different beast. Gepard proved a gun could kill cruise missiles. Skynex proved it could do it on demand, with automation, precision timing, and repeatable accuracy that no 1980s platform could ever achieve. Russia laughed at Gepard. It isn't laughing anymore. With Gepard's history and Skynex's upgrades, Ukraine built something Russia could not overwhelm. Skynex isn't fighting alone. It's part of a layered shield Ukraine has been forced to construct under the pressure of constant missile and drone attacks. A shield built from systems that cover every altitude, cost bracket, and response time. At the top are Iris-T, NASAMS, and Patriot, intercepting high altitude and long range threats. At the very bottom are man pads and mobile teams catching low flying drones, but between those extremes lies a dangerous gap, the middle zone where mass waves of cruise missiles and drones slip through because missile-based systems can't afford to fire endlessly. That is exactly where Skynex sits. Its job is simple but essential. Stop what is too cheap to waste an interceptor on and too fast for man pads to catch. With Gepard batteries, US supplied vampire systems and mobile AAA platforms forming the lower layer, Skynex becomes the hard-hitting economic equalizer that keeps Ukraine from drowning under Russia's saturation strikes. And that layered grid is expanding. In 2025, Ukraine begins receiving the Sky Ranger 35, a self propelled, turret mounted version of the Skynex gun designed for frontline mobility and rapid repositioning. It brings ahead ammunition to the battlefield in a way the towed Skynex mounts cannot, closing a vulnerability Russia once exploited. All of these platforms, from long range interceptors to 35mm guns, are tied into the same networked command and control system, radar feeds, optical tracking, engagement orders, and threat prioritization moving through real-time digital links. That integration forces Russian missiles into a layered gauntlet, where each defensive tier catches what the previous one cannot. Russia fires in waves, Ukraine responds in layers, and Skynex is the layer where cost and capability finally meet. But even the most impressive system has limits, and Skynex is no exception. Skynex is brutally effective, but it is not a miracle weapon, and treating it like one misses the point entirely. Its biggest constraint is structural. Skynex is static. The gun mounts are towed, not self-propelled, which means they protect places, not advancing formations. They guard airfields, power plants, depots, and command nodes, but they cannot race alongside brigades or reposition quickly during fast-moving frontline operations. In dynamic combat, where units relocate every few hours, Skynex cannot keep pace. That role will fall to the incoming Sky Ranger 35, which puts the same gun and ahead ammunition on a mobile turret. But Skynex itself remains a fixed sight defender. The second limitation is volume pressure. Stopping a single cruise missile is what Skynex excels at. Stopping 12 at once is harder. Each engagement burns multiple ahead rounds, and in a major saturation raid, ammunition expenditure climbs extremely quickly. Even with large magazines, the system can be pushed to its logistical limits during prolonged mass attacks, Ukraine's overall cruise missile interception rate, around 67% across all systems, reflects this reality. No system, not even Patriot, can reliably eliminate every subsonic missile in a mixed raid involving decoys, drones, and glide bombs. Skynex contributes crucial kills, but it cannot solve the entire threat on its own. And yet none of these limitations undermine Skynex's strategic value. It was never meant to chase tanks. It was never meant to maneuver across battlefields. It was never meant to replace missile systems. It was built to make cruise missile warfare economically unsustainable. And it performs that mission with precision and consistency. What it cannot do is already assigned to other layers of Ukraine's defense. What it can do is something no other affordable system on the battlefield can match. Skynex is not perfect. It doesn't need to be. Its existence alone rewrites the rules of modern air defense. And yet, despite its constraints, Skynex has already changed global defense planning. The moment Ukraine proved Skynex could kill cruise missiles, NATO's procurement logic flipped almost overnight. Countries that once dismissed gun-based air defense as Cold War throwbacks suddenly started writing checks Romania ordered two Skynex batteries. Austria purchased seven, 
Other European states began requesting classified briefings on the system's combat performance. None of this happened because Skynex looks impressive on a brochure. It happened because NATO planners finally confronted a truth Ukraine had learned the hard way. Missile-only air defense is financially unsustainable. A modern surface-to-air missile costs anywhere from 300,000 euros to 4 million euros. Russia can force defenders to fire those missiles simply by launching cheap decoys, modified drones, or cruise missiles from aircraft thousands of kilometers away. That is not a military tactic. It's economic warfare, and Europe cannot afford to fight that kind of war with missile interceptors alone. Its cost per kill is so low, and its fire volume so high, that gun-based interceptors are no longer seen as secondary systems. They're viewed as the foundation of a sustainable defensive grid. That realization has triggered a doctrinal shift inside NATO. Gun systems handle the bulk of drone and cruise missile attacks. Short-range missile systems catch high-value threats. Long-range systems protect critical nodes and strategic assets, all layered, networked, and coordinated under a common command structure. This new model isn't theory. It is built directly from Ukraine's survival architecture, and Skynex sits at the center of it setting the standard for what a modern, scalable mass strike defense system should look like. Rapid response, network sensors, programmable ammunition, and engagement costs measured in thousands, not millions. For the first time, NATO sees a future where defending European airspace isn't a bankrupting exercise. And militaries that once dismissed gun-based interceptors as relics now understand they are the only systems capable of absorbing the kind of saturation attacks Russia and China are developing. Skynex isn't just a product. It's a template, a blueprint for how to survive mass raids without collapsing financially. And that template is spreading faster than Russia can adapt, and the real urgency becomes clear when you realize what happens next. Ukraine isn't stopping with two Skynex batteries. More units are scheduled for delivery. Additional systems may already be in country. The operators who once trained on drones and shawheads are now mastering something far more valuable. Turning a 35mm cannon into a cruise missile killer? Ukraine showed what one battery can do. Europe is about to show what an entire continent's worth of them looks like. If Ukraine can destroy Russia's best cruise missiles with a 35mm cannon today, what will Europe's skies look like when hundreds of these systems are in place tomorrow? If you found this analysis valuable, please consider subscribing to our channel for more deep dives into geopolitics. We would love to hear your thoughts. Drop your comments below and let us know what you think. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.